Okay, so New Harvest, New Harvest is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. It is completely run by donors, and at the moment there are three people working for New Harvest. And the mission of New Harvest is to address the problem that is currently occurring in factory farming. And there are multiple problems with this system. Uh, for example, there's a higher chance of infection among animals if they're placed in a, a current vertical farm. And that's why we give these animals a lot of antibiotics. And by giving the antibiotics, we prevent them from having diseases like bacterial infection or viral infection. But the problem is by giving them low amounts of antibiotics, the bacteria that live naturally on the cow become resistant to these antibiotics. And if these bacteria would spread to a human being, and we would take antibiotics that are normally prescribed for this type of bacteria, they wouldn't work on this bacteria. So the infection could spread through your body and eventually be life-threatening. So this is a, a huge problem that we're having with avian flu, swine flu, and this is just the top of the iceberg that we're talking about. Other problems are more in the environmental issue. So also ungulates perform, uh, produce a lot of uh, methane, it's a natural process for them grass eating because grass is hard to break down. So there are bacteria in the stomach of these cows that can break down cellulose, which is the compound that they use as energy, and hereby producing methane. So methane is a very potent uh, greenhouse gas. So it contributes to global warming. And with the amount of animals that we're uh, raising right now, this is a serious problem. Uh, with many tons, people are estimating that even the combined uh, output of cars and adult transportation isn't as much as um, animals produce a year. Uh, also, a lot of land is being used by cows, a lot of fresh water is being used by cows. The problem with fresh water is that only 1.7% of the entire uh, world's supply is fresh water, which humans can consume. And 61% of that fresh water is locked up in ice caps. Well, which are melting because of the methane, but that is, of course, is a wrong reason to think about it. Um, so the problem is we're giving water to these animals, and for one kilogram of beef, it costs 15,000 liters of water. And this, this is so much because we also need to water the plants uh, that we're feeding these animals. So we're also using land to grow crops to feed animals, which, of course, is not a very good direct system. So New Harvest's mission is to address these problems by trying to establish a new field in science, uh, which we call cellular agriculture. And this idea of cellular agriculture is that you can create animal products from their basic uh, biological components, which can be proteins, nucle uh, nucleotides, or fats, and even using the cells in the entire system, so using muscle cells, skin cells for making uh, meat and leather in respect. Uh, and we think that just the technology for this is very interesting. There's a lot of medical research being done that can be translated into this field and large. Uh, and it would be, I think, easier because planting stuff in humans or doing stuff with humans is much harder than actually making food out of this. And uh, we think we can translate that into things that we can use in cellular agriculture. So that's why we think it's all started with academics. Uh, academics need to do the research and translate the research that has been done in other labs and then making them suitable for companies to use in large-scale processes. But first, before we can have those tools that can be supplied to uh, companies, we need to have a fundamental understanding of the research that, has, uh, that must be performed. So that's why New Harvest sponsors uh, academic research. It coordinates different types of researchers around the world that have specialties that are very likely to be usable for cellular agriculture. And we uh, talk to these researchers if they want to participate inside of this field or they come to us there when they have an interesting idea. And we are find, we're trying to find ways to fund these people because the problem with getting funding for this research is that uh, we're in between fields, as you can say. We're, we're taking stuff from the medical side and we're applying it for agricultural purposes. And there's no system currently in the government available that acknowledges this uh, field of research and therefore have grants for scientists to pursue this type of research. So that's why the, uh, the only research being done has been has been done by uh, New Harvest. It's been openly published. At least we're trying to get it openly published so that people can contribute to this field to create this critical mass of knowledge that is needed uh, for actually designing the field of cellular agriculture and, and progressing this, uh, this knowledge to actually address this problem. 
So a long answer, but I hope it uh, makes you understand a bit more about what we do. Yeah, so we're actually planning on doing that. We're now trying to, well, that's the problem. We're trying to get funds to actually pursue this type of work. We want to do research ourselves because we have a strategy and we have a plan figured out. So we wanted to do actually, instead of doing it passively, which has been in the past because we weren't uh, financial large enough to actually do research yourself. Uh, research is very expensive and if you are not backed up by governments it's very hard to get all the continuous amount of money to uh, actually do this research but we are looking into it and we are busy figuring out if we can get more people involved so we have more money to actually pursue this research ourselves. Oh yeah, so we're doing both actually. Uh, we're trying to get also in two sides of the program from the Shuttleworth Foundation. This is an organization in South Africa that promotes uh, open access research. This is a person from Mark Shuttleworth. I think he started, was one of the co-founders of Linux. And Linux is an open, openware software uh, operator. And he has this idea that if people would, can contribute to an idea that it could grow and it would become much better than just somebody, some uh, little group of people doing it by themselves. Uh, so we're actually trying to get money from that because they will compensate for some of the salary costs that of course currently is given to the CEO and the development directors. Because uh, they also need to live unfortunately, but we wanted actually to give more of the donations directly to science. And that's why we're applying for this, uh, for this project. And of course, yeah, and also outreach and research is, is part of the things that is very necessary right now, because by just doing research, then nobody will know about it, what we're doing, so we can gain support for this. So that has to be a combination of both, I think, to make your uh, strategy a success. Um, so it really has our point of view about the funding of academic work and then thereby building this field? I think not. No, not that I'm aware of. So the current state of New Harvest is that we're actually we're growing quite fast. Well, we're not growing quite, uh, in the form of people, but we are getting uh, every year we're getting more and more funding from more and more people and we're starting to have conversations with government about uh, funding this type of research and actually ushering the new uh, era of cellular agriculture. We're talking to Tufts University and we have in, in London we have universities participating. So at the moment we're doing uh, spread all over the world different types of uh, small incremental uh, research that we fund from ourselves. So we're, I'm talking, to, it's very exciting, I can't say too much about it, but I'm talking to two researchers at the moment that both have incremental uh, breakthroughs in their fields, which can be combined into a very, very powerful tool for cellular agriculture. It's unfortunately the only thing I can say about it, we're finishing it up. Um, yeah, so that's it. We need, we need, research takes a bit of time, so we're just initiating this progress. We recently... Uh, also in America, we're funding a project that is now or, or is at, uh, happening at the moment, and in uh, the UK, we're funding a research that is currently happening at the moment. Yes, we're, that's one of our, um, our values that we're having at New Harvest, is that we want to really openly share this knowledge like an academic field, because it also happens in other academics. When you publish, uh, when you find, do a findings, you publish it in a scientific journal so people can learn from this, people can contribute to this, and people can actually check if what you're doing is correct, if they don't have maybe in a different way, which is, is better, or uh, maybe that actually your experimental setup was faulty, so you can uh, look if that's something wrong with it. And even they, for themselves, they can redo it to see if it is uh, reproducible data, which is very important. So yeah, we really want it to be as open as possible, but of course respecting the scientific, the scientist's IP, but it's, it's hard, it's hard on both sides because to be really open, you need more money because it's, it costs money to be open. Normally, if you propose such an idea to a, per, to a VC, they will not invest in you because they, they won't see a return on investment because research doesn't bring money, it costs money. 
So before, if you don't have a company, there's no money coming in. So that's why it is sometimes hard to make it 100% open, but we're, achieve, we're trying at least to make it as open as possible and as accessible as possible. Um, I think people, I think it's very good that we made that burger because people could be confronted by it. So they, you know, don't startle, you don't startle somebody, uh, with some suddenly cultured meat. So you may get people used to the idea. And then what the harvest try does, does a lot is try to explain to people what we're doing and the benefits of it and why we actually should do this research because the current state of our system isn't really that well working. Um, but so I think people are getting used to it. If I talk to friends in my inner circle, but you know, they have, of course have incentive to be open for this because you know, I'm your friend, but other people as well, they're interested in it. They're getting more interest in it. So the, I think the egg factor, of course, you will have people that wouldn't eat it, but then again, you would get to eat a lot of people that otherwise won't eat meat. So it's a bit of both, I think. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Because that, that's what we have been doing, actually. You know, we have been talking at South by Southwest and doing panels. And, you know, there's a lot of animal advocacy groups that show that it's very nasty. So we're, we're, we're not focused on the animal welfare because apparently people are not really caring about animals in the bigger term. They do care about it. So there are a lot of meat eaters that have a guilt feeling like, oh, I know it's bad, but I still my quality of life is better when I eat meat, which, you know, you should, can only really, you can not do anything about it. It's their beliefs. But we can try to mitigate these awful effects. So that's what we've been trying to do, trying to get comparisons. But the thing is, people, to compare something, you really need to have a product. You say, well, look at this. We have this right now, and it costs less or it is less harmful compared to something that is in taste equal. And we're not there yet. We're working on it. It's still quite a long way ahead. Um, yeah, the... the I don't know the exact numbers. I got them somewhere, but I, I need to look them up. But we give about in the US is like 40 tons of antibiotics goes to animals every year. And by putting more animals in smaller cages and worse conditions, you bring them in closer contact, uh, which are more prone for infection. So people will probably will need to stay, keep giving antibiotics to actually make factory farming viable. The thing is with the problem, the thing is that you compare it to cultured meat is that if you grow something in a lab, you can grow this in a sterile environment. We're already doing this. There is already quality control measures. There is already knowledge about this in the pharmaceutical industry. They are growing large amount of cells for, uh, and for antibodies in totally sterile conditions so that the cultures which produces the antibody doesn't get infected. And there are large quality control measures for this to see if there's all, zero infection in there. And this can be translated into uh, growing meat, actually, because already the, the infrastructure for doing this and the knowledge by, for doing a sterile environment is already there. So this way, we wouldn't have to use antibiotics. Or if we do, we could don't use it inside of the animal, but just to sterilize things. And by doing it in a sterile environment, so we won't need antibiotics to grow this meat and it can be completely antibiotic free. So there's no chance of bacteria getting in contact with these antibiotics to make them resistant or even uh, meat infected by, uh, by bacteria, which is happening now quite a lot. That depends a bit on the system that you were adapting in the end, because at the moment we are struggling with the cell type that we should use to create this muscle. Because there are different cell types which you, that probably are feasible for this. The cultured hamburger was made by primary um, st muscle stem cells, but there are some fundamental 
characteristics about these cells which make them not very well served for this type of purpose. For example, um, they're already terminally differentiated, so they can only become muscle cell, but I just told you that we also need more type of cells, so we also need fat cells or an artery cells. So we need to uh, grow them separately, which of course is very is not optimal. We prefer to grow one cell type that can grow multiple. Uh, and there are cell types like this, they're called pluripotent stem cells, so more from embryos or induced pluripotent stem cells, which we then can differentiate into all these uh, multiple cell types. Uh, and this can be, so the, the thing is, if you use muscle stem cells, you would re need to re-harvest these cells over and over again by going to a cow and injecting or getting a biopsy or maybe even kill them if you don't, if you want to have a lot of cells. So it wouldn't be kill three, but if you use the more stem cell approach where you can take a, a cell from one of these cows and uh, grow it indefinite like a embryo does or embryonic, embryonic stem cells do, you don't need to go back uh, to this cow to harvest again. So it depends on what type of system we are adopting at the end, which is more suitable. But we're not there yet. We're, that's what we're researching, one of the things that we're researching. Um, yeah, actually, we probably can, but well, not organs. Organs, you know, muscle tissue is, if you look at it from a histology perspective, like how is a muscle built from all these cells, it's actually fairly easy if you compare this to a kidney or a liver. Those organs have a very high complexity of structure, of structure going on with multiple cell types working together to create this complex uh, tissue that has multiple functions. A muscle cell just contracts. That's the only thing it does. So it, the structure of this is in is very easy. There's no uh, really subdivisions, large subdivisions of how muscles look like under a microscope compared to a kidney or a liver. But for people who have muscle injuries or have Duchenne or MS or any other muscle disease, this could be actually probably translated into ways to grow muscle tissue for patients. But of course, that's going to be more restricted because there are more restrictions on putting organ transplants than for creating meat. But there's a possibility. Uh, yes, there's definitely a difference in producing a pound of meat compared to a pound of egg. Uh, the egg is what we call an acellular product, so it's made, it's, it's a piece of the cell, it's a protein that the cell produces, so not the entire cell. So, and it's also, it can be done by yeast or bacteria. And while you want to eat, and meat can't be produced by uh, yeast and bacteria. So making just one protein or a couple of proteins to make milk or cultured egg is a lot less energy intensive, I think, is than making a piece of meat. Yeah, I, I got that question a lot, and after a while, I I just had to answer that I I don't know, I can't I can't tell you an honest guess because people have been saying a lot of things, and I hate it when people say yes. Yeah, everyone has the magical five years or ten years. Nobody really knows. Nobody really knows, and it depends on a lot of things. For example, if we would get more funding from governments and more people would participate, it would just go faster. If there are regulatory bodies that say, well, we actually don't want this, or there is the public says, well, this is not actually the way we want to go, it won't or go slower. So there are so many factors playing on this that we are working on, and we can foresee right now that there's no honest answer in telling you when the first product is coming to market. Probably something in the same area. There is cost reduction is still nobody has the fundamental research in feed medium or so the stuff that we feed cells. There's almost no progress being in there, so it probably costs something the same. That's why that's why we're we are thinking that this should be researched as an academic discipline because nobody is participating in this. We should need to have more scientists working on this to have these innovations. So there's there's I think I can I'm not sure. Maybe there are the companies that are working on this that say, well, we can do it for less, but I still think it's around in the same price area. Uh, 
Okay, so we have now a grant application together with Tuft University. We wrote a grant application together. And as the, the updates are because we just accepted our first uh, PhD candidate. So who is participating? So Tuft University has been, and also there's a PhD or a, a master project in North Carolina State, but it's not government funded, that are funded by us. No, so the only thing with governments that are funding actively is the uh, position on Tufts University. For the rest, we have we have had trouble reaching out to them or people not being open to this. So yeah, we um, it's the NSF I think that is actually now our first contact with government agencies. The problem is with companies is they probably want to have a return on investment. So if they invest in you, they want to see actually see a product, like a VC model, or they wanted to lock up the discovery that you're making and so that nobody can participate instead of license it for a lot of money. And that's not what we want to do. That's a bit of a problem. We still want, of course, that, uh, that there are a little bit of compensation is being made if you use a discovery, but locking it up and asking large amounts of money for using the technology is something that we actually are afraid of, that this will happen so that there is going to be a monopoly in this field. Somebody made a breakthrough in this, and this is something that we want to prevent, actually. So big companies haven't shown interest because of several reasons in according with financing and uh, IP uh, ownage. Yeah, yeah, we're organizing the conference on July 13th in, in San Francisco. So to get people more involved and to get an overview of the landscape, we've invited all the players, so companies, um, universities, people who do research, people who just started research, uh, people who do prototypes in what in the area of what we call cellular agriculture. So not just cultured meat, but also uh, cultured uh, milk, cultured eggs. Uh, you can see, see in the website, uh, there's even going to be the moon parka from uh, Spyber Japan. These people made a spider silk jacket without uh, using any spiders, so it is from a culture. And they made a moon parka, that's what they call it on this. You can see it on the website, it is super cool and it's going to be, it's the first time it's going to leave Japan. It's going to be at a conference and it will be a lot of uh, discussion to see what's going on in the field, what are the problems and how does the public look at it. Uh, what are the things that are going on in the lab? What are the things going on in the companies? So that people get a, a good overview of what we're doing, why we're doing, who's doing it, and how far along the process everybody is. So that it's very interesting to, to see all the people together for the first time uh, since this field has, has begun. Of course, talk about it. That's always something that's so low level that you can do. Uh, talk about it with friends. Say, well, what do you think about this? Is this is something we should be doing. Uh, how do you feel about this? And then try to get the facts first, of course. Try to understand what's going on and how we are doing things right now. Inform them that the current method is very damaging and there's an alternative. Well, there's an, a, a other way we could probably do this. Uh, yeah, reaching out to your your representatives is something, of course, you could do. Um, yeah, maybe if you have a science education, try to get in touch with us, see what's going on. Uh, try maybe for yourself to find a path that you think is interesting to, if you can participate in this by doing courses in tissue engineering or other um, scientific disciplines that could assist in this type of field. And for this, I hope you do, to donate if, to New Harvest because we could use the money and then to allocate to the researchers to actually do the research.